Innovation is the heartbeat of our world today. And yet, amidst these groundbreaking strides, certain ingenious minds and their revolutionary creations have silently faded away. This video discusses 15 inventions and inventors who were silenced and buried. Why were these potentially game-changing ideas met with suppression, whether through external forces or the twists of fate? Let's find out. These narratives not only beckon us to ponder the very essence of progress, but also spotlight the intricate interplay between invention, influence, and the pages of history. Our symbolizes the culmination of the second stage. Number 15, Tucker Automobile. Does the name Preston Tucker ring a bell? He was an independent-minded entrepreneur and automotive visionary, set out to revolutionize the automotive industry with his groundbreaking creation, the Tucker 48. Born in 1903 in Capac, Michigan, Tucker's lifelong obsession with automobiles led him on a remarkable journey. At just 16, he was already flipping cars for profit, eventually leaving school to work at Cadillac. His unconventional path even included a stint in the Lincoln Park Police Department, where he earned a ban for modifying a police vehicle's dashboard with a blowtorch. Tucker's automotive journey took a turn toward motorsports in the 1930s when he partnered with Harry Miller to develop race cars near the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. This collaboration resulted in the Tucker Tiger, an armored vehicle with a rotating turret, an early display of Tucker's innovative spirit. Post-World War II, sensing the public's thirst for new cars, Tucker unveiled his magnum opus, the Tucker Torpedo, later known as the 48. This car was a leap forward in design, featuring a rear-mounted engine, cutting-edge safety features like a padded dash and pop-out windshield, disc brakes, and a distinctive Cyclops Eye center headlight. Despite these innovations, Tucker faced adversity, only 51. Tucker 48 cars were produced before legal troubles struck. The Securities and Exchange Commission launched an investigation, accusing Tucker of unorthodox fundraising methods. Although he was later acquitted, the damage had been done, his factory was lost, and the company drowned in debt. Preston Tucker's dream of transforming the automotive landscape was silenced, not by technological shortcomings, but by legal battles and financial woes. His story is a poignant example of an inventor whose vision clashed with the establishment, leaving his revolutionary ideas ideas buried in the records of automotive history. The Tucker 48, a symbol of innovation, became a rare relic of what might have been, an invention and an inventor silenced but never forgotten. Number 14. The Avro Car. In the intriguing tale of the Avrocar, the quest for a futuristic flying saucer began in the 1950s. The spark ignited during a covert meeting between Canadian and British intelligence in West Germany. A former Luftwaffe engineer claimed to have worked on a flying saucer during World War II. The revelation piqued the interest of Avro Canada's chief designer, John Frost who soon found himself at the helm of a clandestine project. Frost, having previously worked in England on swept-back wings, envisioned an aircraft that could defy conventional limitations. He proposed a saucer-shaped vehicle named the Avro Canada VZ-9 Avrocar, powered by three engines directing thrust toward the ground. The sides of the saucer featured vents with variable flaps for directional control. Despite skepticism from critics, the United States Air Force saw potential and committed funding to Frost's audacious venture. By 1957, two Avro cars had materialized, one for design testing in Canada and the other for wind tunnel experiments in California. However, the dream of a revolutionary flying saucer soon encountered turbulence. While the Avro car showcased controlled flight at less than three feet, stability faltered beyond three feet two inches. This discrepancy from Frost's vision prompted the Air Force to pull the plug, withdrawing the $7.5 million investment. What silenced the Avrocar's inventor and the details of its demise remain shrouded in speculation. The project's cancellation raises questions about whether the Air Force intentionally stifled the development of this futuristic aircraft. The peculiar maneuverability described by Frost bears an uncanny resemblance to unidentified flying object sightings, fueling theories of deliberate suppression. John Frost's dream of a revolutionary flying saucer, once soaring on the wings of possibility, ultimately faced grounded realities and the shadowy realms of military decisions. The Avro Car! Number 13. Pioneer scientist unraveled the mystery of molecular biosciences. Jonathan Wydom, 
A highly esteemed scientist was known for his groundbreaking contributions to molecular biosciences. As a professor at Northwestern University, he was widely recognized for his dedication to unraveling the intricacies of life at a microscopic level. His pioneering research delved into the packaging of deoxyribonucleic acid into chromosomes and the strategic placement of these chromosomes within cells. Widom's insights into chromatin structure, the complex interplay of DNA and proteins forming chromosomes, and its impact on gene expression earned him international acclaim. He was a trailblazer in introducing the concept of position effect, suggesting that gene behavior could change based on its position in the chromosome. His invaluable work had profound implications for understanding how mutations could lead to diseases, particularly in the realms of genetic disorders and cancer. Tragically, on July 26, 2011, Jonathan Widom passed away suddenly at the age of 55 due to a heart attack, sending shockwaves through the scientific community. His untimely death left an unfinished legacy, raising speculation about the potential revelations his deep understanding of genetic structures and disease might have uncovered. Despite the mystery surrounding his death, Jonathan Widom's lasting impact on molecular biosciences persists. His pioneering research laid the foundation for subsequent studies in epigenetics, a field exploring changes in gene expression without altering the underlying DNA sequence. Widom's work continues to shape the scientific landscape, inspiring current and future generations of scientists. While the scientific community mourns the loss of such a brilliant mind, the quest for understanding life at its most fundamental level perseveres. We build upon the foundations laid by pioneers like Jonathan Widom, unraveling DNA sequences and mapping chromosomes. His legacy endures in every scientific pursuit, reminding us of the relentless pursuit of knowledge and the profound influence that one scientist's research can have on the world. The question of whether Widom's intimate understanding of life's building blocks played a role in his untimely demise remains as strange as the intricacies of the genetic code he devoted his life to deciphering. Number 12. The Ogle Carburetor. What forces conspired to hush the Ogle Carburetor invention? A fuel efficiency marvel, claiming over 100 miles per gallon? What led to the mysterious downfall of its creator, Tom Ogle, leaving behind a lingering tale of innovation silenced? Let's find out. Tom Ogle, a young El Pasoan, started tinkering with the idea of improving fuel efficiency after a serendipitous discovery while working on a lawn mower in 1971. Accidentally puncturing the mower's fuel tank led him to create a vaporized fuel system that allowed the machine to run on gasoline vapors, achieving an impressive 96 hours of operation. Ogle's innovation didn't stop there. He successfully adapted the system to a car, a 1972 Thunderbird, and claimed to achieve over 100 miles per gallon. His invention, known as the Oglemobile, garnered attention and interest, especially during a time of energy crisis in the late 1970s. However, despite Ogle's success and the support of some engineers who deemed his system feasible, obstacles emerged. The Energy Research and Development Administration rejected Ogle's system as not practical, hindering potential government support. Criticism and challenges from various quarters, including legal issues with alleged financial backers, added to the inventor's woes. The turning point came in 1978, when Ogle sold the manufacturing and marketing rights to his invention to Advanced Fuel Systems Incorporated, a company in Washington state. This move, intended to propel Ogle's invention into the mainstream, took a dark turn when the Securities Exchange Commission filed a complaint against Advanced Fuel Systems for violating federal securities laws. Legal entanglements followed, casting a shadow over Ogle's vision. As the story unfolds, Ogle's life takes a downward spiral marked by financial troubles, legal battles, and personal struggles. In 1981, at the age of 26, Tom Ogle died under mysterious circumstances attributed to an alcohol and drug overdose. The circumstances surrounding his death, coupled with ongoing legal disputes over his invention's financial backing, left lingering questions about whether Ogle's innovative solution to fuel efficiency faced deliberate suppression. Number 11. Rife Machine Royal Raymond Reif, an inventive American, made waves in the 20th century with his revolutionary microscopes and the creation of the oscillating beam ray. His microscopes, claiming an unparalleled ability to observe live microorganisms, and the beam ray, which aimed to combat diseases using radio waves, put him in the spotlight. 
Despite collaboration with scientists and publications in respected journals, Reif's ideas faced resistance from established medical entities like the American Medical Association and the American Cancer Society. Skepticism arose due to the lack of scientific support for his claims, especially regarding the supposed devitalization of disease organisms. Reif's concepts lingered through supporters who believed in the potential of electromagnetic frequencies to disable cancer cells and disease-causing microorganisms. However, health authorities worldwide did not endorse these claims, and Reif machines did not receive approval for treatment. In his later years, Reif encountered financial hardships and harbored bitterness over the rejection of his inventions. His passing in 1971 was marked by financial struggles and a sense of embitterment. His obituary suggested that he attributed the failure of his devices to a conspiracy involving organized medicine, including the American Medical Association and the Department of Public Health whom he believed had brainwashed and intimidated his colleagues. Following his death, the Rife machine became associated with health fraud. Promoters, lacking scientific validation, faced legal consequences for deceptive practices. Rife's legacy remains controversial, with proponents emphasizing potential benefits and detractors dismissing his work as pseudoscience. The suppression of Rife's machine reflects the clash between unconventional theories and established medical norms, illustrating the challenges faced by innovators in gaining acceptance within the scientific community. Number 10. The Dynosphere In the quirky realm of vehicle design, the 1930s brought us the Dynosphere, a colossal monowheel electric car that danced on the edge of innovation and eccentricity. Conceived by John Archibald Purves of Taunton, Somerset, United Kingdom, this wheeled wonder drew inspiration from a sketch by none other than Leonardo da Vinci. Purves, along with his son, embarked on the ambitious journey of crafting two prototypes, an electric model and one powered by a gasoline motor. The latter boasted either 2.5 or 6 horsepower depending on the source and utilized a two-cylinder air-cooled Douglas engine. The Dynosphere, standing at an impressive 10 feet and weighing 1,000 pounds, managed top speeds of 25 to 30 miles per hour. Despite its awe-inspiring appearance, the Dynosphere faced challenges. Steering the behemoth was a crude affair, requiring the driver to lean in the intended direction. This primitive method proved impractical, especially when coupled with the quizzical phenomenon known as gerbiling. Acceleration or braking would cause the driver's housing to spin within the moving structure, adding a layer of uncontrollability. The dream of a high-speed future vehicle, as envisioned by Purves, began to fade. The 1932 Popular Science magazine captured his optimism after a test drive, claiming the Dynosphere reduced locomotion to the simplest possible form. However, criticisms mounted. A 2007 book, Crazy Cars, pointed out that while the vehicle could move, steering and braking posed nearly insurmountable challenges. The wheels of progress for the Dynosphere came to a halt. Purves's invention, despite its bold aspirations, fell silent. The impractical steering, coupled with the peculiar quirks like gerbiling, contributed to its demise. Number 9. The Aero Wagon in the early 1920s, against the backdrop of post-revolutionary Russia, Valerian Abakovsky, a young and enthusiastic train driver, embarked on a daring venture inspired by German engineer Otto Steinitz's Dringos propeller locomotive. The concept was revolutionary, melding a train with an airplane engine to create a self-propelled carriage, aptly named the Aerowagon. Abakovsky, driven by a passion for technology and a desire to contribute to the rapidly changing Soviet landscape, saw the potential for a high-speed transport transportation system. His aero wagon, with a distinctive wedge-shaped nose and a powerful aircraft engine propelling a wooden propeller, showcased remarkable speed capabilities, reaching up to 140 km per hour during trials in the summer of 1921. Recognizing its utility, Soviet authorities considered it a viable means of swiftly transporting government officials and sensitive materials. However, tragedy struck during a high-profile demonstration with foreign delegates on board. On July 24, 1921, the aero wagon derailed near Serpukov, resulting in a catastrophic accident that claimed the lives of six people, including Abakovsky. Officially, the incident was attributed to the quality of Russian railroads and the investigation was abruptly concluded. Yet, with whispers of political reprisal lingered. Artem Fedorovich Sergeyev, the son of Comrade Artem, one of the victims and a close associate of Stalin, later proposed a different theory. He suggested that the accident might have been orchestrated as a political maneuver to counter
counter the influence of Lev Trotsky. Trotsky, a prominent figure with aspirations for power, allegedly sought to undermine Artem's rising influence through the International Union of Miners, established just days before the tragedy. In the aftermath, the Arrowagon project was buried, and any potential political motivations behind the disaster were silenced. The concept remained dormant until 1970, when a revamped version, equipped with Artificial Intelligence 25 jet engines, was developed. However, the dark shadow of political intrigue that surrounded Abakovsky's invention persisted, revealing the complex intersections of technology, politics, and personal ambitions in the tumultuous early years of the Soviet Union. Number 8. The Water-Powered Car This is the story of Stanley Meyer. It revolves around his claim to have developed a revolutionary water fuel cell that could potentially replace traditional gasoline in cars. Meyer asserted that his device could split water into its components, hydrogen and oxygen, with the hydrogen being burned to generate energy. He argued that the process required less energy than conventional science predicted for electrolysis. The key element in his alleged mechanism was Brown's gas, an oxyhydrogen hydrogen mixture, which, if the device worked as he described, would defy the first and second laws of thermodynamics, essentially functioning as a perpetual motion machine. However, in 1996, an Ohio court declared Meyer's claims fraudulent. The court found that his water fuel cell and the associated car were not as groundbreaking as he professed. The scientific community was skeptical from the beginning, as his inventions seemed to violate established principles. The story took a mysterious turn with Stanley Meyer's sudden death on March 20, 1998, while dining at a restaurant. His brother claimed Meyer ran outside exclaiming, they poisoned me, during a meeting with Belgian investors. Investigations, however, pointed to Meyer succumbing to a cerebral aneurysm, exacerbated by his pre-existing high blood pressure. Conspiracy theories emerged among Meyer's supporters, speculating that he was assassinated to suppress his invention. Philippe van de Mortel, one of the Belgian investors, refuted these claims, stating he had supported Meyer financially and considered him a friend. Despite the controversies surrounding Meyer's death and the legal debunking of his inventions, his patents have since expired, placing his work in the public domain. Nevertheless, no engine or vehicle manufacturer has embraced or incorporated Meyer's water fuel cell technology, leaving his legacy marred by skepticism and a lack of mainstream acceptance. Number 7. Cold Fusion in 1989, the scientific world buzzed with excitement as electrochemists Martin Fleischmann and Stanley Pons claimed to have achieved nuclear fusion in a simple electrolysis cell, a phenomenon dubbed cold fusion. This announcement sparked hope for a revolutionary, cheap, and pollution-free energy source. However, the scientific community quickly soured on the idea, deeming it inconsistent and fraught with experimental. Cold fusion became synonymous with junk science, leading to its dismissal and silencing. Despite this setback, back, the quest for unconventional energy persisted. Brilliant Light Power, founded by Randall Mills in 1991, became a torchbearer in the pursuit of new energy technologies. Mills proposed a theory involving a novel state of hydrogen called the Hydrino, which could liberate copious amounts of energy. His company aimed to harness this power commercially, rekindling the dream of limitless and clean energy. The story unfolds with Howard Wilk, a synthetic organic chemist, tracking Brilliant Light Power's progress. Wilk, grappling with underemployment in a non-science job, delves into Mills' theory, attending demonstrations and engaging in discussions. Yet, amidst this renewed interest, skepticism prevails. The scientific community, scarred by the cold fusion debacle, hesitates to embrace Mills' hydrino theory. Mills' unorthodox approach, rooted in a grand unified theory of classical physics, diverges from conventional quantum theory, further alienating mainstream acceptance. The inventor's attempts to commercialize hydrino-based technology face skepticism, reminiscent of the cold fusion era. Despite potential breakthroughs, the scientific community remains wary, possibly contributing to the silencing effect. Number 6. The Electric Car the history of the electric car is a fascinating journey that began in the 1800s with innovators in Hungary, the Netherlands, and the United States experimenting with battery-powered vehicles. While it's challenging to attribute the invention to a single inventor or country, breakthroughs in battery and electric motor technology paved the way for the first practical electric vehicle. In the late 1800s, the United States saw the debut of the first successful electric car around 1890, thanks to William Morrison, a chemist from Des Moines, Iowa. 
Electric cars quickly gained popularity, especially in urban areas, offering a quiet and clean alternative to the noisy and polluting gasoline cars of the time. By 1900, electric cars accounted for about a third of all vehicles on the road, with over 60 electric taxis in New York City alone. However, the early rise of electric cars faced challenges. The mass-produced Model T by Henry Ford in 1908 revolutionized the automobile industry, making gasoline-powered cars widely available available and affordable. The introduction of the electric starter by Charles Kettering in 1912 eliminated the need for hand crank, further boosting gasoline car sales. By the 1920s, improved road infrastructure and the availability of cheap gasoline led to a decline in electric vehicle popularity, and by 1935, they virtually disappeared. The 1970s marked a revival of interest in electric vehicles due to oil crises. However, limited technology advancements hindered their widespread adoption. Fast forward to the 1990s, when environmental concerns, new regulations, and advancements in battery technology reignited interest in electric cars. Despite these developments, the documentary who Killed the Electric Car in 2006 shed light on the demise of GM's EV1, suggesting factors like high production costs contributed to its discontinuation. The true revival of electric vehicles came in the early 21st century with the Toyota Prius and the announcement of Tesla Motors in 2006. However, challenges persisted, and the fate of electric cars in the future remains uncertain, dependent on technological advancements, government initiatives, and consumer preferences. Now, it's time for today's subscriber pick. Hey there, curious minds. I'm sure that by now you have been amazed by the different stories of inventors and their inventions that have been silenced and buried. Most of these hidden stories of innovation have gone underground. Before we continue diving into this mysterious world of 15 inventors who faced the unthinkable. Elimination. We would like to hear from you. Which silenced inventor surprised you the most? Drop your thoughts in the comments below and let's unravel this conspiracy together. Number 5. Cloudbuster. In the mid-20th century, Austrian psychoanalyst Wilhelm Reich embarked on a journey that would lead to the creation of the Cloudbuster, a device he believed could manipulate weather patterns. Reich was deeply influenced by his theories on orgone energy, a life force he thought permeated the atmosphere. This belief sparked his quest to develop a tool capable of harnessing and redirecting this energy for practical purposes, such as inducing rain. The Cloudbuster itself was constructed with an array of parallel metal tubes aimed at the sky. Connected to flexible metal hoses, these tubes were either submerged in water or joined to a single large diameter pipe placed in water, a material Reich presumed to absorb orgone energy. By pointing the apparatus at the sky, Reich hoped to draw orgone energy to the ground acting like a lightning rod for atmospheric forces. Despite Reich's enthusiasm and numerous experiments, there were no verified instances of the Cloudbuster achieving its intended weather-altering effects. Scientific skepticism grew around Reich's orgone energy concept, deeming it pseudoscience. The silencing of Wilhelm Reich was a consequence of various factors. His unorthodox and controversial ideas, coupled with the lack of empirical evidence supporting his claims, led the scientific community to reject his work. In 1954, the United States Food and Drug Administration obtained an injunction against Reich, preventing him from distributing orgone energy accumulators, devices he claimed could improve health. Reich's refusal to comply with the injunction resulted in his arrest, and in 1957, he passed away in federal custody. The suppression of Reich's work was driven by a combination of scientific skepticism, regulatory actions, and legal measures. Despite the intriguing concept of manipulating weather through orgone energy, the Cloudbuster's inventor faced opposition that ultimately silenced his unconventional pursuits. Number 4. The Coral Castle Code Coral Castle, a fascinating oolite limestone structure in Florida, tells a mysterious tale woven with the eccentricities of its creator, Edward Leeds Kalman. The story begins with a heartbreak. Rejected by his 16-year-old fiancé in Latvia, Leeds Kalman ventures to the United States. Allegedly facing terminal tuberculosis, he claimed to have healed himself using magnets, sparking the enigmatic journey of Coral Castle's construction. For more than 28 years, Leeds Kalnin sculpted massive stones into various shapes, such as slab walls, tables, and a crescent moon. What adds to the intrigue 
is his insistence on solitude during the construction, refusing anyone to witness his work. Teenagers who claimed to have seen him reported stones moving as if manipulated by some supernatural force. Leeds Kalnan's motivation remained veiled in mystery. When asked about the purpose of the castle, he cryptically replied it was for his sweet 16, believed to be a reference to his lost love. However, this sweet 16 was considered by some to be more of an ideal than an actual person. The silence surrounding the invention and its inventor's methods deepened as Leeds Kalnan took elaborate measures to protect his privacy. Moving the entire castle 10 miles north from its original location, he aimed to escape the discussions about developing land in the initial area. Leeds Kalnan's work defied explanation, and he never divulged his construction techniques, simply stating, it's not difficult if you know how. The intrigue continued after Leeds Kalnan's death in 1951. No will was found and the property, along with the secrets within its walls, passed to his nephew. The castle changed hands several times, but the mystery endured, bolstered by discrepancies in accounts and ownership. Number 3. The Crinovisor Father Pellegrino Ernetti's claim to fame revolves around his supposed invention, the Chronovisor, a device with the extraordinary ability to view and record events from the past. According to Ernetti, the Chronovisor utilized a combination of sophisticated technologies, including antennas to capture residual electromagnetic radiation and a screen to display the retrieved images and sounds. The origin of Chronovisor's invention is linked to Ernetti's interest in medieval music. In the 1950s, while working with renowned physicist Enrico Fermi, Ernetti became determined to recover lost compositions by ancient composers. This desire led him to collaborate with a group of scientists and researchers to develop the chronovisor. As the story goes, the device not only allowed them to witness historical events, but also to capture the sights and sounds of the past. However, the intriguing tale takes a suspicious turn. Father Ernetti and his collaborators, including scientists like Fermi and Nobel laureate Werner von Braun, reportedly decided to keep the chronovisor a secret. The reason given was the potential misuse of such a powerful tool, leading to concerns about altering historical events or the unintended consequences of revealing certain information. The secrecy surrounding the chronovisor inevitably sparked skepticism and controversy. Critics questioned the credibility of Ernetti's claims, pointing to the lack of concrete evidence or scientific validation. The supposed inventor never provided a public demonstration of the device, leaving many to view the chronovisor as more of a fantastical story than a groundbreaking invention. The mystery deepened as Father Ernetti and his collaborators, including Fermi, faced accusations of suppressing the technology. Some believe that the Vatican, with its cautious approach to matters of science and potential controversies, played a role in silencing the inventors. However, no conclusive evidence has surfaced to confirm or refute these claims. Number 2. Anti-Gravity Device The anti-gravity device was invented by Thomas Townsend Brown. Thomas Townsend Brown's story is a fascinating journey into the realms of invention, gravity, and controversy. In 1921, while still in high school, Brown stumbled upon an unusual phenomenon during experiments with a Coolidge tube. Placing it on a balance scale, he noticed that when the tube's positive electrode faced up, its mass seemed to decrease, and when facing down, it seemed to increase. Convinced he had discovered a link between strong electric fields and gravity, Brown embarked on a lifelong quest. His experiments led to the creation of an electrical device he named the Gravitor, or Gravitator, patented in 1928. This device, consisting of a dielectric material with electrodes, demonstrated movement when exposed to electrical power, with Brown claiming it interacted mysteriously with gravity. His vision extended to a future where large-scale versions of these devices could propel ocean liners or even futuristic space cars to Mars. However, the journey wasn't without its challenges. Brown faced skepticism from his peers and instructors at Caltech when trying to convince them of his theories. Despite publishing his ideas in How I Control Gravitation in 1929, mainstream interest was limited. His attempts to promote his inventions to General Motors in 1930 and the Naval Research Laboratory in 1932 were met with mixed reception. The turning point came after World War II, when Brown sought to sell his inventions for aircraft and spacecraft propulsion. The phenomenon was termed electrogravitics, emphasizing the electricity-gravity connection. Brown refined his designs, incorporating metal plates charged with high voltages, 
He demonstrated these to scientists and military officials in the United States, England, and France in the 1950s. However, skepticism grew. A physicist observing Brown's disk device in the early 1950s attributed its motion to the well-known electric wind phenomenon, not anti-gravity. Number 1. The Controversial Journey of the Keeley Motor John Ernst Worrell Keeley, a 19th century inventor from Philadelphia, embarked on a journey to create the Keeley Motor, a device he claimed could achieve perpetual motion. Orphaned in early childhood, Keeley had diverse work experiences, ranging from being an orchestra leader to a carnival barker and mechanic. In 1872, Keeley announced a groundbreaking principle for power production based on musical vibrations, asserting that music could resonate with atoms or the ether. With $10,000 in investment, he founded the Keeley Motor Company in New York. Keeley's demonstrations, utilizing terms like vibratory generator and hydro-pneumatic pulsating vacuum engine, attracted attention, notably from wealthy widow Clara Jessup Bloomfield Moore. However, Keeley faced challenges. Skepticism arose as he kept changing the terminology during demonstrations, and allegations questioned the credibility of his experiments. Keeley's reluctance to allow others, including engineers and scientists, to touch his machinery fueled doubts. Despite regular public demonstrations using musical instruments to activate his machines, he faced legal issues, fraud accusations, and even claims of sorcery and occultism. When investors pressed for marketable products, Keeley refused, insisting on more experiments. Suggestions to collaborate with Thomas Edison or Nikola Tesla were rejected. Keeley's financial troubles escalated as stockholders withdrew support, pushing him close to bankruptcy. Controversy heightened posthumously. Journalists and engineers investigating Keeley's laboratory after his death discovered hidden mechanisms and pneumatic switches, discrediting his inventions. The Scientific American referred to Keeley's machines as a heterogeneous comminglement of absurdities. The exposure of hidden workings led to historical portrayals of Keeley as a fraud. In the end, the combination of skepticism, financial pressures, and the unmasking of hidden mechanisms contributed to the silencing of Keeley's invention and his legacy, leaving a complex narrative of a man striving to revolutionize energy but succumbing to controversy and skepticism. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.